Welcome to They That Hope with Father Dave and Bob, seeing humor and hope in a crazy world. And I'm Bob. And I'm still Father Dave. How are you, Robert? I'm doing awesome. I, uh, you're in, you're in Steubenville, okay, right? We, we, with, we need... I mean, it's hard to tell one blank wall from another. I was going to say, we need to play Guess Where You Are, but I know where you are. So it, it kind of <laughs> it, it it takes... You're, you're kind of on top of my yeah, schedule, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, I am in... Um, well, I'm in Springfield, Missouri. I just finished hosting the Steubenville-St. Louis Mid-America Conference, which is neither in Steubenville nor St. Louis. But it is in Mid-America. And vaguely in Mid-America. It is. Well, you know, act, technically Mid-America, like the, well, it, like if you're like 1873 wagon train, we're in Mid-America. But um, are we if you go coast to coast, like Lebanon, Kansas. No, we are not. That's why I'm trying to explain no. this. So Lebanon, Kansas is actually the town that is in the right middle of America. And that's about six and a half hours away. So, okay. well, we'll, 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 we'll work, America-ish? next year we'll work on changing it to mid right. Yeah, we're going to change it yeah. to almost mid America, <laughs> Middle East. Yeah. We're in we're in the Middle East. Yeah, that's great. That's <laughs> that's going to attract a large population. That's going to be huge. It was a good weekend You're evangelizing in Middle East America. It was a fantastic weekend. Um, you know, this uh, first of all, it's just so great to have conferences back. And, uh, it, you know, for me, it was very, very special this summer. Obviously, not having the conferences last summer was a, was a real loss. I've been doing conferences for over 25 years. So more than half of my life, I've been doing uh, these, these conferences. And, uh, you know, we did the conferences on campus in, in June, and I got to host one. Normally, I, I lead worship at youth conferences. This is the first summer I didn't. I empowered uh, my trusty sidekick, John Paul Von Arks, who's doing an amazing job. Yeah. To do that, and I just thought, as I'm getting older and as I'm heading towards ordination, you know, just trying to let some things go. So, I I, I usually get to do, you know, four or five conferences every summer, every summer, if not six. And uh, this summer, I'm just—I mean, youth conferences yeah. specifically. And this summer, I'm only doing two. You know, so I did one in Steubenville, and then I had some weekends off. It was kind of weird to have a weekend off when there was a youth conference going on. I wasn't used to that. And then I got to do uh, this one here in, in St. Louis, and. You know, well, I mean, hey, the conference itself is just just great. I mean, St. Louis, they do an incredible job. The reason we're in Springfield, it's called St. Louis because the Archdiocese of St. Louis runs it. They just run it in the diocese next over. The bishop here, by the way, is Bishop Edward Rice. So I like to call him Uncle Ed. D- distant relation? No relation, okay. by the way. Yeah, mm-hmm. second cousin once removed, okay. I think. Okay. I just like to throw in once removed because that, you know, makes everything work. And... um yeah, there, we had about sixteen to 1,800 young people, um, but what really moved me just on a personal level uh, was so many of the teams, so many of the people here uh, were at youth conferences when I was hosting at some other place, or even when you were hosting. You know, the, the sister that came up and did the vocations call, you know, was saying, you know, when I was your age, I was in a seat like yours, except it was in a tent, and, you know, Father Dave Pavanka was there, and, then, <laughs> and he's like, and, and Bob Rice was still my host. <laughs> You know, cause, I mean, it was just kind of crazy. The, the priest there had stood up at a student bowl youth conference, you know, that, that I was at. Uh, you know, the, the musician knew all the theme songs from the 90s. You know, he said that was his playlist when he was a teenager. And I got to see, you know, current students that were in the crowd, you know, helping with youth groups. I got to see a lot of alumni. Oh, I, I mean, at the end of Mass, I had to excuse myself. I just – I broke down in, like, messy sobs, just so grateful for what God's, you know, just to see, you know, in ministry, you don't always get to see the fruit yeah, of it, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, it's it's a lot of work. It's a lot of effort, you know, but just those little that moments is, of glory. And that is one of the cool you're things. You're like, Lord, you're so good. You know, of, of doing the conferences for a while. I remember one particular time I was doing a, a wedding. So I was at the parish and stayed in the rectory. And the the priest was very accommodating, very friendly, and this, that, and the other. And we, we kind of chit-chatted and all this. So... The wedding was Saturday. On Sunday morning, I can celebrate at Mass with him. So he begins the Mass saying, um, Father Dave doesn't know this. And then he goes through and he tells the story that he was at a youth conference. And we, as, as you know, and maybe the listeners, if you don't know, the, we end every youth conference with a vocation call to invite the young uh, men and women, the young students, to consider the possibility of, of a 
religious vocation or priestly vocation. Uh, and this guy goes on and says it was the first time anybody had ever invited him and he stood up and he came and received my blessing. It's like, he didn't say anything like the whole time we were together. And he just shares this story <laughs> right. about gratitude that he had. And it was just the same thing. My my response was, was one of emotion. And yeah, in, in that yeah. the Lord uses us. Yeah, the yeah. fact that he uses us is pretty remarkable. Um, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah, I was even thinking that. Like a kid like me, you know, picked on yeah. you know i mean it, it's yeah just such a gift that yeah. uh yeah, yeah it's just hard to say that's and you awesome. know for our listeners if you don't know it uh you know one of the things that's always amazing every year is when they do surveys of seminarians like 13 or 14 yeah. percent of seminarians say that they went to a student youth conference and then that was an important moment in their life or so, the university I mean, what, what those conferences have done for the church uh, yeah at the university yeah. right yeah. um you know what you what franciscan has been doing has just been it's just been really, it, it's incredible. It yeah, it's just a great gift. And, that's one of the things and you that, got to spend time with your brothers. I did. I did. Oh, one last maybe Sorry. thing. It's, it's also one of the graces of the conferences. I mean, when, when Father Mike and the university started the conferences, it was actually the first weekend was with the priests. And Father Mike said, you know, what, what can we do to help you? And, and they said, we need to do something for kids. So that's when we started the youth conferences. But the grace of just yeah. that faithfulness of, of providing retreats and conferences for the young people has been vocations you know it wasn't like oh let's do this so we get vocations but that was a fruit of that and it's it's been just had a right. huge impact on the church yes so yeah right so yeah. Uh, my community my my franciscan community gets together every summer and we get together for four or five days and we pray and we just spend time together and uh, i was we had a big jubilee celebration for friars who were celebrating their 20th anniversary of vows or 25th anniversary. And I celebrated my 25th anniversary of ordination. So there's a, just a wonderful yeah. liturgy and dinner that was great. One of our friars is celebrating his 65th year of ordination. I mean, that's just... Of ordination. Of ordination. It's just so that's remarkable. Amazing. It really is. Just, you know, I'm always touched by God's faithfulness in, in our community. But yeah. it was like I was sharing earlier, one of the most, actually the... It sounds strange, but one of the most beautiful times was we had a big thunderstorm and we have our, where the elderly friars live, there's kind of a balcony and you can be underneath. And me and a couple of other friars just sitting around for about an hour and a half, just talking and laughing and telling stories in the midst of thunder and lightning. And it was just, it was just a wonderful, beautiful, fraternal time that uh, I enjoyed very, very much. Yeah. It, was, it was great to be there. Yeah. Have you ever been to Loretto? Yeah. Praise God. I... I... Yes, at once okay. I, I came out to um, the university there, okay, uh, and Same then place. I got to see the mother house, okay. and it, yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous it is. out it's there. It's really, really pretty area. That was like a donation or something from some rich guy, right? Yeah, the, well, years and years ago, it was the Schwab estate, and Schwab was part of the Carnegie, right, crew right, and right, all right. That Charles Schwab out of yeah. out of uh, Pittsburgh, but yeah, yeah, it's a long story, but it's a beautiful, beautiful estate. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, praise God. Amen. Um, and for all of you involved in ministry and doing things, uh, I pray God will also get to show you little fruits of that along the way. Everybody, uh, that's what you know keeps us going. It's Everybody, great. Bob. You know, I was, you know, I was just thinking the the parents out there. I mean, yeah, w mm -hmm. what they're doing, informing their kids, and it's just I, I, it's kind of close because I went to a baptism today, and just when they say, "Are are you are you prepared for your, what you're about to undertake?" and this was a, a young couple, and they're like, "Yes, we are." It's like, "Oh, you have no idea what you're getting into." You know? <laughs> Buckle up. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, as prepared as they can be, mm -hmm. but God gives us all the grace to do it. So awesome. Well, you know, we're past the midpoint of 2021, which is a perfect time for our college-bound listeners to start thinking about where to go to college in 2022. So this would be next fall. And it really, it is a great time to be thinking about that. Uh, and if you know somebody who is entering into their senior year, uh, maybe this is something you can share with them to start thinking about uh, Franciscan University. Actually, enrollment is now open for the fall of 2022. Nice. And that's where we find actually a lot of students, even heading into their senior year, are already applying and are already looking 
uh, for the school that they'll attend a, a year later. So it's, it's not too early, really. It's not too early. And with over 90 academic programs, including our newest majors in criminal justice and biochemistry, Franciscan offers career education and vocation formation for just about everyone. So come visit Franciscan University of Steubenville. Join us for Mass. Meet a professor. You can meet me. Sit in on a class. Uh, spend a night in a residence hall. Attend a festival of praise and find out what makes Franciscan University a Newman Guide recommended Catholic college. Uh, to schedule a visit, you can go to franciscan.edu. That's franciscan.edu. And those are always fun. Those are fun. Have Bob, students, do you uh, think you know, like when people you know, are, have high school kids come in classes and stuff? They're listening to that thing and they're like, I don't know, I don't know. Or I could meet Bob Rice. I'll bet you that's like the turning point. Boom. Yeah. That's what happens. Yeah. That is that is what happens. Do you think we yeah, have anybody even, listens you know, that's under eighteen? If you are a listener under eighteen, please send me an email at hope at franciscan dot edu. Your own kids. That's hope at franciscan dot edu. And email is a thing your parents use. It's called electronic mail. Right. And maybe you can ask them to show you. No, they what could DM us. Inbox is. They could DM you or me. Oh yeah, they could. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do that. Hey, you know, I if you're not aware of it, uh, you listeners, I have an Instagram account called The Real Bob Rice. Uh, so don't accept substitutions, the fake ones. Uh, yeah. But uh, you can always follow me on Instagram at The Real Bob Rice, and you can send me a message. Uh, Father Dave, what's your Franciscan Instagram? president? Franciscan okay. president. I, I, I heard you the first time. Oh, That's I, great. I thought I so lost it's you. It's not there. like. Father Dave Pavanka, that's the most creative title you could come up with, Franciscan president. Sorry. So it, when there's another president like 20 years from now, are they going to get that account? Is this like the POTUS Twitter it account? Is. I mean, how does that work? Yep. They get it. Oh, okay. 20 years from now, huh? <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. 20 years from now. Like, that's what I'll I'm be, thinking. Oh, my gosh. I'll be your age. How old will you be 20 years from now? Uh, 76. 93? Uh, that's not funny, Bob. Let's keep going. Okay, close enough. Yep. <laughs> you could be 76. Yeah, that's cool. Ish? Yeah. You're a spry 76. I would hope to think so. So we had a... So anyway, let us know. But uh, yeah, I, I would actually think mo many of our listeners might be more aware of some young people in their lives, uh, maybe their own kids or uh, people they encounter in ministry. And uh, we just love it. Encourage... Uh, you know, I, I always do a plug at these conferences about Franciscan. And I always say the most important thing is when you're looking at a college... You, you know, yes, the academics, yes, the professional preparation. Go somewhere where you will be able to grow in holiness. Yeah. Or go somewhere where you'll be able to be a saint. And I don't want to say Franciscan's got the exclusive lock on it, but it's one of the best places to do that. And okay. certainly make sure you check it out. And I think those come and see weekends are really so important to like physically come to campus and be at the masses and be in the classes. All those things are really great. So just, you know, if you're, if you're not thinking of going to college as an undergrad, if you're not that age, encourage somebody that you know. Uh, and that's always a real blessing. Amen. Even if they don't come here, they're usually always really blessed by just spending some time on this campus. Amen. Amen. We'd like to have them here. Amen. So we had an, Well, now for something completely different. Yeah. Yeah. We had an interesting, <laughs> interesting weekend, didn't we? Yeah, I, it yeah. Was, I, I yeah. get up Friday morning and uh, begin just kind of going through emails and, you know, what's going on. And, and obviously here the Holy Father's new uh, motu proprio uh, related to the traditional mass. And, and it was just, yeah, I, in fact, we talked a little bit about it before. I think my feeling was very similar with yours, and that was that, you know, some people that I care about deeply are, are going to be really troubled by that. Yeah. So that. And this was even before I read it yeah. or because the initial some of the initial things were where I like everything else, like people just kind of they begin to speak before they actually know what, what was said and those kinds of right. things. But I no matter what, I knew that that it was going to be difficult. So, yeah. And don't trust USA Today. Don't trust Fox News. Don't trust CNN. Yeah, don't yeah. trust Associated Press. None of them are going to give you the right story. Right. Those are the first headlines that end up in our inbox. Right. But, you know, there it's always a clickbait thing that they want you to. And you that's know, be even, scandalized you know, and, and, and that's and even watch true, it. Bob, within the Catholic circles, you know. So you read on one hand yep. the Catholic Reporter, the NCR, and they have their plug on it. And then you've got the register and there's various. So, you know, I, one of the things I often do is first off, read the document itself. Read the document, what the Holy Father was yep. saying and the changes that are going to be taking place. And then also read the, the he also wrote a letter that was accompanied to this doc, document to the bishops. 
Yeah, but, I think the letter is actually better to read than the document. You know, I, I actually I, I tend to agree because it gives some of the rationale for for why he did it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I agree. But even and unfortunately, even in the media, Catholic media, everybody's got their plug and their spin. So that's what I did. I read read the documents and then just read kind of different opinions on what people were saying and just trying to get a deeper understanding of it. It always bugs me, and this happened again with this, that you, you see, you know, I'm reading pretty much everything on the internet. So few articles will just include a link to go to the document. Yeah, yeah. You know, like they're quoting what Francis says in the letter, and you, and it's like you have to do – it's like, why don't you just give me the link? Oh, because you want me to keep reading your right, thing, right. you know, and, and there is that. Right. There is that level, but I agree. I first heard about it, and – yeah, you know, I love Pope Francis, and uh, you know, I'm not naive about uh, some of the way he comes across. Um, I, you know, he's our father, like he's our holy father, and I feel like, you know, when I saw this, my first thing was a mourning for some friends of mine who struggle with some of the way Pope Francis says things or some of the, you know, theology of Pope Francis, and and would feel really hurt by this. Would feel like it's a direct attack against something they love. And of course, the way a lot of those articles were framed, it seemed like, you know, this this is it. Sure. Benedict gave you something beautiful and Pope Francis is taking it yeah, away, right, right, you know. Right. And again, when you read the letter of Pope Francis, I think first of all, it's always good just to take a breath and r realize our kind of americocentrism that we approach everything with, you know, it, it's easy to feel like you know, Pope Francis is just tired of these conservative Catholic bloggers in the U.S., and he's going to get them back, right? Um, you know, in a, in the entire world, only five percent of Catholics reside in North America. No, I think it's eight percent now. Mm -hmm. North America, okay? So that's like a huge, like this is, you know, ninety-two percent of the rest of the Catholic Church are outside of North America, and the issues, you know, when the Pope deals with it again, you know, like for example, I. I have a T-shirt that says Tampa Bay Buccaneers, world champions. And I feel like, you know, I, I wonder if all the nations in Africa realize their world champion resides in Tampa Bay, right? You know, like we just have a way of thinking it's all about us. And it's not all about us. And so there are a lot of issues worldwide that Pope Francis is responding to with it. So, you know, A, it's not just a... It's not just an American thing, though we certainly have some of those issues in the United States. But sure. it's interesting sure. to me, not being too familiar with the world, that this must have been a big enough issue around the world sure. as they surveyed all the bishops that he felt like you know he needed to do something to try to preserve the unity of the church. Yeah, and, and I think that's one of the things is that, again, this for some people, this is very dear to them, and, and it is going to feel like an affront. and. Yeah, as soon as it happened, I reached out to our bishop and I said, you know, Bishop, you know, what's this going to look like? And he said, honestly, for the community in Steubenville, they're not going to really notice any kind of a change that that the individuals who are offering the extraordinary form will continue to be able to do that. Obviously, it takes place on the university campus. He said, you'll be able to continue to do that there as well. But it was interesting because, yeah. I, you know, I asked, well, Bishop, why now? Or when? And he said, well, the reality is, is, is in, in most places, it, this has is, is worked pretty well. But he said that there are some places that it's been really problematic. And the, what Benedict's uh, uh, motu proprio. And the, the thing that, that I think is, is important is, is that, unfortunately, those who are most vocal don't really speak for the vast majority who find just a beauty and a consolation and, and a... a a way of worshiping the extraordinary form. Like one of the individuals that emailed me, she's that's all she grew up with. I mean, her family started to go into the extraordinary form when she was mm -hmm. three years old, and that's all she's ever known. And and that and that's a population that that is is just sensitive. And I'm sure that they they were concerned and they were hurt about this. Now she was very excited to hear that it's not going to impact what we're doing here on campus. That everything's going to be fine. But then there's there's yeah. the vocal ones that. I mean, some of the, the things that have been said about, you know, about Vatican II and Novus Ordo and the Pope and all the Popes since, you know, since Vatican II and all that, it's some of those abuses that, that the Holy Father is dealing with. Now, one of, the, one of the things that you're seeing is, yeah, there are other abuses as well. Why doesn't the Holy Father deal with those? I can't question that, but I don't disagree with that, you know. 
um, that there are other yeah. major issues that are going on in the church. And why did he feel that at this point, at this time, that this was when I, I can't answer that. I just don't know. But I, I agree with what you said, Bobby, yeah. is that um, he is our Holy Father. Uh, you know, uh, I'm sure that some I don't I'm, I'm absolutely certain that some people are really hurt by this. And, and I pray for them and just trust that, that the Lord will, will work this out and that ultimately good will come about from this. Yeah, I mean, he mentioned in his letter um, how, uh, you know, he was saddened by uh, the division that it's causing, the the struggles. And, um, you know, he says, actually, uh, the final reason for my decision is this. Ever more plain in the words and attitudes of many is the close connection between the choice of celebrations, according to the liturgical books, books prior to Vatican Council II, and the rejection of the church and her institutions in the name of what is called the true church. One is dealing here with uh, comportment that contradicts communion and nurtures the divisive tendency. And he quotes from Scripture, I belong to Paul, I belong to Apollo, mm -hmm. I belong to Peter, I belong to Christ. Uh, and in defense of the unity of the body of Christ, he said, I'm constrained to revoke the faculty granted by my predecessors, the distorted use as contrary to the intentions that led to granting the freedom to celebrate uh, the Mass. Um, and because liturgical celebrations are a sacrament of unity, they need to be carried out in communion of the Church. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as you're reading this letter, I mean, it feels like he's just genuinely struggling with the fact that there are some, not all, and I would even, I agree, not the majority. Sure, absolutely. You know, who have sadly used that permission that was given by the Second Vatican, you know, by, by Pope Benedict. And again, not just in the United States. Right, this right, is a right. worldwide problem. Right. And they're using it as a way to say, yep, that's right, because this is the true liturgy and that Vatican II stuff is nonsense. And that's why, I mean, one of the major changes is he's just putting it under the authority, not of a previous mode proprio, but under the authority of bishops. He's just looking to have, you know, there are some bishops that were saying, these communities are running without any leadership, and they're doing whatever they're doing, and they're saying, well, we can because, you know, of that motu proprio. So, you know, Francis is trying to give more authority to bishops, and even as I was reading the Catholic sites, they were just – bishop after bishop in the United States at least was like, yeah, no change, no change, no change. You know, like parishes that are, you know, submissive to the bishop and, you know, are, are self-liturgy, the bishop's like, yeah, that's great. You know, yeah. so I think for many – who are listening and who love the Latin rite, you know, the, the headlines were Pope Francis is taking away the Latin yeah, rite, yeah, yeah. squelching yeah, yeah. the Latin rite. And actually he's just giving more authority to the bishops so that those small areas that are taking uh, the celebration of this liturgy out of context and are using it in a divisive way to say this is the real liturgy, that other stuff is fake – now the bishops have some say over that and, yeah. and, and, and can and have think, more control over and, it. And, and that's, just, the, that's the long game of the unity of the church. Yeah, I just, and that, I just to reiterate what you said, and, and we both said it, but it's important, is that the, those who are most vocal, unfortunately, and, and have the largest audience, I suppose, ultimately have, I don't think, have served the community well. I mean, as you stated, I in the last two or three years, I net like I would give talks and I would talk about Vatican II, and people would come up to me and they say, "Well, what do you you know? Do you really think that's a valid council?" Or it was just a pastoral council, this, that, and the other. And and Bob, I don't. It, it's just the, the reality, right? I'm not making a judgment, but the reality is, it was that same population that that was um, almost predominantly worshiping within the uh, that community with the traditional community again that it's a complicated thing right and and i i, yeah. I, I go yeah. back to what i said at the very beginning my heart broke because i knew some people were going to be sad they were going to be frightened they were going to be anxious yeah. um so i continue to pray for that and, and i just pray for yeah for the the vast majority of people that are just this is just the way they they encountered the Lord. That's the way they love to worship. It was a beautiful yeah. opportunity for them. Um, and, and the reality, as you stated, and, and as the bishop here at Steubenville stated, for the vast majority of people, they're not going to see any significant difference in this. Yeah. And, and when, you know, I had a random thought. Here, that occurred. Okay, here we go. Oh, go ahead. No, random thoughts are always dangerous. Go for it. Well, it's just that, you know, we call the Mass in the vernacular the Novus Ordo, and we call the Mass in Latin the Extraordinary Form. 
So why do we call the Latin Mass by an English name, but the English Mass by a Latin that is, name? That is I just random. thought that was kind but of But that is one of the things that he, cha- he asked to that change, is too, is that it, the extraordinary form is not language that, that Pope Francis used anymore. Uh, so that's that is a Ooh, change. what's the new language? Did did he give it? Did he give us a new language for it? Or? He does, but it just it, it it's escaped. Is it something in Latin. Moment. It's escaped me at the moment. Oh, sorry. Yeah. But again, sure and you and I, you and I have talked about this. I think we talked a little bit about it with the whole communion and, and politicians and all that. That the evil one, the the Eucharist is the place that we're supposed to be most united. So if the evil one can cause yeah. us to be divided there, I mean. I recall um, Francis de Sales says the corruption of that which is best is worse. That that if if he can corrupt that which is, which is the best, and that is the Eucharist and unity, and cause us to be disunited. I mean, and that's just what breaks my heart in this. Is it's it's you know it's your mass. It's you know we don't like the way you do mass. We don't like the way you do mass. That's actually what I preached about right. this morning. Is is the second reading from Ephesians? Paul says that that the blood of Jesus has demolished the dividing walls, right? And he was speaking mm-hmm. about the temple and the dividing walls, and and we now have access to the Lord, but it's also the dividing walls between us. And he was talking about Jew and Gentile that that in Christ we are the body, and we need to continue to pray for the body, Bob. I mean, it just it just continues to yeah. to be strong. But but again, the yeah. That when we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus and continue to look to him and he is the source yeah. of our hope, we're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. But as, if we look at the walls where we just focus on each other and how different we are, that's that's when we get to be a problem. So we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Yeah, it's not about I worship in Latin or I worship in English or I follow Francis or I follow Benedict. Well, that's what he talks about it's in about his letter. He says, Christ. some said Apollo, some said Paul. Yep. Some, yeah, yeah. Good. You've yeah. got a plug? Amen. So, amen. Amen. I do. I do. Uh, it's a, written by a friend of mine, and I think you know him as well, Scott Anthony. I do. Uh, Scott is a youth minister out in York, Pennsylvania. Uh, a number of his kids attend Franciscan. He's been bringing young people to Franciscan conferences for years. I mean, he is the ultimate veteran of youth ministry. I mean, just front lines, loving young people, great speaker, great presenter. And he just came out with his own book. It's called Ignited for Christ. The Gifts of the Holy Spirit and You. Nice. Like and uh, he self-published it. It's available at Amazon.com. Uh, so he can't give us a discount, unfortunately. No Dave and Bob discount. But it's a it's a short little book. It's about 120 pages. And it comes just from all – I mean he has just you know over 20 years of giving confirmation retreats and talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, you really get to polish every one of those That's points cool. and every one of those talks. That's and cool. so we really get a best of talk – on the sacrament of confirmation. So it's great for those that are receiving. It's great for those who are going to help prepare those to receive. It's great for parents who have kids that are going to receive the sacrament of confirmation. And it's also just great to reflect on the graces of confirmation. You know, sometimes sacraments like a baptism or a confirmation, or I'd even say, you know, marriage, a holy orders, you know, we receive them at one point in our life and we can kind of think they're in the rear view mirror of it, you know, because sacraments like reconciliation and Eucharist we keep receiving, but there's a way in which we always just need to call upon those graces mm-hmm. of the sacraments that we have received, yeah. and a book like this, I think, is a great reminder of that. So you can go to okay, Amazon.com, and you can check out Ignited for Christ. I have a question for you. Do you, are you, do you yeah. have ac- contact with him? I do. Okay, because, you know, I just read something that – I wonder if there's a way we could even put it in the um, description where they could get the book from him directly. Instead of going through Amazon, because Amazon oh. takes a chunk of it, so it maybe maybe they, Amazon does take a chunk. Maybe of there's it. some way. We'll, we'll pay attention and look in in our description. Maybe we can have contact for him. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, if there's not a better way, yeah. Amazon's a great way to do it. But maybe we can find a way that he can do it That's and cool. get a little bit more money. Because cool. yeah, you don't you don't write a book and make money. No, no. Tell me <laughs> That's about for it. sure. Tell me about so it. it's a labor of love. It's a labor of love for him and. Uh, yeah, it'd be great to support. I heard somewhere like only 10% of books published sell more than 5,000 copies. Yeah, that's true. And actually, and maybe it's only like 1% of books. Yeah, it might not even be that big. And only like less than 1% of the books that are sold uh-huh. support the rest of the bookstore. Yeah. Like yeah. you need a Harry Potter yeah, or yeah. something, a massive book. 
and that is all the sales. Like it is so hard to sell books. And, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and you know this next generation isn't really known as being readers, you mm -hmm. know themselves. So uh, yeah, please support your local bookstore, your local like, Catholic bookstore. That new book of mine, I was surprised how expensive it was. God well, you know, it's expensive buy. because they, it, it's like a, it's like a circle that gets worse, like, because then less people read. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you can't buy yeah. as many on bulk to get the price down and then it becomes more expensive and then less people read because it's so expensive. Okay. And yada, yada, yada. So, um, Amen. yeah, just encouragement to all the listeners, visit your local Catholic bookstore if you got one, uh, you know, support Catholic writers, uh, like Scott Anthony and others. And, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a great way to. You know, even if it's a little bit more money than a really popular book that's discounted because they made millions of those right, books, exactly. uh, think of it as a bit of a tithe. You know, you're, you're supporting, you're supporting the faith, and I yeah. think that's a great thing to do. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Speaking of faith, tomorrow. tomorrow, big feast day. You know, I love Mary Magdalene. Yeah, you know, I, it's the Holy Father um, made this, made her a feast day, and. I think it was right after the first year I actually was at a conference and I, and I was able to preach on her feast day. And honestly, ever since that, I've just, I love the image of Mary Magdalene getting up early in the morning just because she wants to be with Jesus. You know, she wants to be near his grave and yeah. his tomb. And, and, and she goes there and obviously the tomb is empty. She goes and she gets Peter and John. They run back. And then I love it. If you pay attention to the text, it says she goes back to the tomb. I mean, it's, she just doesn't know where to go, right? She just doesn't know what to do. She, she doesn't can't, know what yeah, she's she supposed just, to. Yeah. She, and, and that was the last place she knew, and that's where she was going to go. And, and then that's obviously where she encounters him. But, yeah. you, you know. And, and, and the first, I mean, of all the people the Lord appears to first. Yeah. It, it's, it's Mary Magdalene. Yeah, yeah. You know, no, it's like just, what a beautiful, what a love he has for her and a love she has for him. No. I don't know how to love Oh, don't go there. Him. Don't go there, Bob. Yeah, it's a good song. You're not yeah, wrong. I guess You're not crazy. wrong. You're not wrong. But it's just it's um yeah. it, it just causes me to, I mean, on so many levels that that he would appear to a woman. Uh, it's just it's in, in in my mind mm -hmm. it's one of the um, confirming realities that makes Christianity more believable is the fact that he did go to a woman, right? Right? That it wasn't some Pontius yeah. Pilate. He just kind of shows up or whatever to Herod. And, but it's, <laughs> right. it's this woman. Kicks the door down. Right, exactly. He's back, you know. Yeah. But it's this woman <laughs> with, with really questionable history and background. And she just, I don't know, it's just beautiful. You know, it's just having... having. I love, uh, in the scriptures, there's that moment where... Um, he says, you know, she like hugs him and he just says, you know, like, you know, don't hold on to me. You know, I haven't yet ascended to my father. And I'd love to know like what happened in real time. Like yeah. how long was that hug? Did it kind of get awkward? She's, it's like a messy sob. Yeah. She's crying yeah. and he's like, okay, okay, okay no, okay, okay yeah. no, okay. You, you, enough. I, enough. I got other people enough. to appear enough. to. Like, enough. I love you, but you know, come on. <laughs> I haven't yet ascended to the father, yeah. you know, but it's just a beautiful moment, you know, it just is. like she's so, just wants to hold him forever, you know, and She's so joyful and she doesn't want to let go. And you just have to feel like it's, it's going to be okay. Yeah. You know, it, it's going to be, I'm not, you know, I'm here forever. I'm all, I'll be with you always. Yeah. It, yeah. it is such a beautiful saint and image and yeah. gift I, I to just, the church. Yeah. yeah especially just, that it's a, that it's a feast day. She's such a, uh, yeah. So that's such a beautiful story. I mean, if, if you're, if you wanted to take in, you know, just kind of a snapshot of, of the Christian person that, that God's just done such a great work in their life. Mary is such a beautiful image and and that once she was in, she was all in, you know, in the in the cross and yeah. again. He just wanted to be with him. So it's a beautiful day. Everybody celebrate tomorrow and yeah, just be thankful for God's mercy in our life. That that no matter what our story is, no matter what our background is uh, the Lord intervenes and he brings about, I mean, this is a woman I love in, in uh chosen, you know, I was one way and I encountered him and now I'm totally different. And it was he that was the, yeah. the, the, the hinge. And that's just so beautiful. So beautiful. So everyone have a great day tomorrow. Amen. Yeah. When do you come home? Why don't you close this in prayer? Okay. When do you come home? Oh, I'm going to be home. Um, oh, well, Thursday. Okay. I'll be, I'll be home tomorrow. Okay. Good. Well, so, I, I just can't wait yeah, to see you. Been in Texas helping youth ministers. Yeah, I can't wait to see you too. Yeah, Bob. And then next week we'll be together again, again. for our podcast. Ebony <laughs> and Ivory. Anyway. All it's right. kind of like Ivory and Ivory. Oh, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Lord, we just ask your blessing. Harry upon... okay. and okay. not Harry. Okay. 
I knew I should. I don't that. know how to love you. How can we stop it? Lord, we just ask your blessing upon uh, those who have joined us today and just ask you to continue to shower them with your hope and your peace and your blessing. Heavenly Father, we pray for uh, the individual who's listening, who's struggling most today, or for their family member who's struggling most, that you would breathe your life into their heart, that your love, which does not disappoint, uh, continues to be poured forth into their heart. Father, we do pray for our brothers and sisters who are struggling right now with the Holy Father's uh, letter last week. Just meet them in their questions and their frustration and even in their anger, Jesus. Just meet them there and bring your presence and your love and your healing. We ask Almighty God to pour his blessings on you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 God bless you, Thanks, Bob. Father Dave. We'll see you later. Thank you. And uh, thank you all who are listening, all who are watching. Uh, we so appreciate everything that uh, you get to share with us. You can keep doing that at our email. That's hope at franciscan.edu. That's hope at franciscan.edu. And we'll talk to you all next week. God bless. Yeah.